Hey, I'm just popping on here to share a cranky that I recently made about springtime plants. If you don't know what a cranky is, I can tell you real quick. It's a long illustrated scroll that you can paint on or draw on or apply cut out paper. And this is a cranky that I made recently. Showing some solar system stuff. You take the cranky, you put it in this wooden box that has these rotating poles and you crank it and it goes by in this sort of panoramic, old school storytelling way. Some kinetic movement. So I made a cranky about springtime plants as a way for me to learn more about them and because I find them beautiful and fascinating and I wanted to share it with people and hopefully it'll inspire you to take a look around in the woods when you're on a walk and consider learning more about the plants in your area. So my first panel is based on a photo that my friend Anna took of a morel mandala. She went out to a Patapsco I think and found a bunch of morels which are these edible sac fungi. They kind of this honeycomb appearance and um, if you find morels a lot of people like to cook them um, they're sort of hard to find because they look they look so much like the forest floor like leaves um, but finding them is a lot of fun and they're very tasty so i hear they grow by uh, two poplar trees and other trees and they have a symbiotic relationship with trees meaning mushroom and trees benefit Garlic mustard, it is everywhere. Might be invasive, I would have to double check on that. But uh, yeah, we have a lot in the woods by where I live. Um, they kind of have this rigged heart-shaped look to the leaves with these little white flowers. They're biennial flowering plants, which means I think the first year they're just sort of developing their roots and establishing their foundation. And the second year they um, blossom and spread seed. You can eat garlic mustard, you can harvest it and turn it into things like pesto or put it in salad. You want to be careful when you're harvesting it though and not get too close to a roadway or another place where that might be runoff or pollutants because my friend who's um, a pro at foraging says that uh, garlic mustard picks up a lot of heavy metal in the soil. Violet! A springtime favorite of mine. They remind me of pansies. Maybe they're related. But, um, they're just beautiful, vibrant purple flowers. Um, in April, my backyard was just like blasted with violets. And it's a nice contrast against the green grass. And it's great to just see color returning. Um, my neighbor um, plucked a bunch of violet petals and made violet essence syrup for us, which we were putting in. Um, you know, fizzy water, mixing it with gin. Um, you can also make a salve for um, for yourself with the leaves. Um, if you like dry the leaves and mix it with oil. I hear it can help benefit cold and flu. I don't know too much about medicinal properties of plants. As I said, I made this so I could learn more and think more about these plants beyond just admiring them. Um, but yeah, they're, they've got these cute heart shaped leaves and bright purple color. The mayapple is another favorite of mine. They start popping up all along the forest floor in April. Um, there's always like dozens and dozens in a cluster at once. And in late April, they typically start showing their mayapple flower, which is this beautiful white flower. Um, I heard it's not edible, so yeah, I know I've talked about some edible stuff right now, so do some research before you consider um, eating a mayapple because I don't I don't think it's edible. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I love them. My birthday is in May, um, so it's just like a, it's like seeing an old friend when they return to the forest and thinking of all this returning growth. Wine berries. Wine berries are delicious. They typically come out um, in berry form early July. 
if you go somewhere like Catoctin Mountains, which is a, you know, a little bit west of the city in Baltimore, um, you can get them later on because uh, they're at a higher altitude, different climate. Um, if you live in the Baltimore area, you can find a lot of wineberry bushes in Druid Hill and in Herring Run Park. Um, but yeah, they're very distinct, these like crimson arches. Right now they're covered in leaves and in the winter time though, they're bare and they look beautiful when they're backlit by the sun and illuminating. My last panel is the Jack in the Pulpit. I don't know much about this plant, but I love its shape. So it has a stem right here that splits into two. On this side, it's sort of this three, three leafed look. And on this side, there's this vessel with a little fold over and the stamen, I guess the, the Jack in the Pulpit is inside of it. And uh, yeah, they're just really cool shaped plants. Uh, when I first shared this cranky with friends, my one friend said that he went on a walk later and he's like, oh, that's that's the Jack in the Pulpit. And then he was doing research on Georgia O'Keeffe and she had painted a Jack in the Pulpit before. So we made a cool connection of two Jack in the Pulpit paintings. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this cranky. I hope it inspires you to go on some walks in the woods and look at the plants around you and think more about them, about their structure, about how they might be beneficial. Um, yeah, and I hope to make some more. Thank you.